Praise God, praise God. This is Prophetess Deanna Dixon. I hope that you are having a blessed night. Give him praise, give him honor, give him glory. I'm going to wait till you guys come up in here. Mm. Praise God, praise God. I'm going to wait till you guys come up in here. All right, enough of you on here. Praise God. First of all, I want to thank you all for those that have um, prayed and lifted us up. Um, you know, my uncle passed this morning, so our family need the prayers. And um, <laughs> just got some other news about another family member um, basically fighting for their life as well. So I'm now I know I've been just up and praying, up and praying. Praise God, praise God. But thank you, Jesus. I'm going to come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God up in here. God is still God. Hallelujah. God is still God. I'm going to say it again. God is still God. Hallelujah. And he's still good. Hallelujah. So if you look at my title, it says, Thus saith the Lord, the weapon may form, but it may not prosper. But it will not prosper. Let me say it again. Thus saith the Lord, the weapon may form, but it will not prosper. He never said it wouldn't form. I think so many Christians, as a matter of fact, I know that. We go through so much on a daily basis, um, spiritual warfare, just life. And some people say, well, why? Uh, what's going on? Or God, I don't understand. I serve you. I fast. I pray. He never said that it wouldn't form. But what he did say, I'm not going to let that thing take you out. I'm not going to let that thing stop you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to press on. I don't care what is going on. I hear pray and press, pray and press, pray and press. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. This stuff is real. I don't know what you're going through because everybody going through something. Everybody's hurting. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Everybody got to struggle. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But I know one thing. If you really be honest on this live tonight, that pain push you through your purpose. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't care what it is. Nothing like pain pushing through your purpose because it makes you pray more. It makes you fast more. It gets you closer to God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And that's where we at. I'm reminded about Joshua and Caleb. You see, right now, the body of Christ, we really is in a shift. And I pray that we catch the thing what God is trying to tell us. It is time to possess the land, saints. I know this going on. I know that going on. But hallelujah. Now, when the 10 spies went, they didn't have enough faith. But, but God knew what he was doing. He sent them 10 little spies and they, I don't know, we look like grasshoppers in their sight. But God, Caleb went and Caleb said, I think we can take them. Caleb said, I think we can take them. And Joshua believed Caleb. What am I saying? I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what the enemy is doing. I don't care what God ever allowed. Come on, somebody. I think we could take them. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You might have to fast. You might have to get on your face. You might have to pray more. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You might have to shift. I'm going to say it again. Shift. We're in a shifting season. People are doing what they want to do, but you better learn how to fast. You better learn how to pray. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to praise your way through in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I could not sleep last night. As a matter of fact, if y'all follow me, y'all already know. I could not, I haven't been able to sleep for two nights. So basically, I've just been praying and praying and praying. That's why I put up on here. I said, any prayer requests? But I'm going to be honest with you. I knew yesterday. I prepared my dad. I said, Dad, God said, your brother will not make it. And it was hard for him to accept that. But it helped him today. But I had to also process it. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Because we could pray all day long. Oh, God, heal them. God, deliver. God, please. God, please. I think what people don't understand is he does it either on this side or on the other side. Oh, come on, somebody. We don't want that to touch us. Sometimes the healing is in them going home and be with God. They ain't got to go through nothing no more. They ain't got to suffer. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me up in here. The weapon may form, but it will not prosper. I want to encourage you tonight. And let me tell you, I had class tonight. And, and this is just my testimony tonight. I had class tonight and my uncle Richard was just like a dad to me. We were very close. I'm going to be honest with you. We talked about everything and I do mean everything. I, he he told me secrets. I think I know people don't think I know, but I know. And I'm telling you, I was really, I was crying today. I ain't going to lie to you. I was crying and I was going to do my class and I wasn't going to actually get up on there. I was going to just do audio. It's like I could hear my uncle Richard's voice saying, girl, you better get up and do what you got to do. And look good doing it. So I got up. 
and I put on one of his favorite colors, red, and I got myself together. And I see, <laughs> that's about right. You would say something like that. And again, he didn't speak it to me. It just came in my spirit what he would say. And I knew that was God encouraging me. Well, come on, somebody, I'm encouraging you. I, I don't care if it's a death or if it's a loss of a job or financial or even COVID. Or come on, somebody, whatever you're going through, know that you're going through it and that God is with you. Because God said, I would never leave you. I would never forsake you. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. It's praying time. It's fasting time. Hallelujah. Like never before, said the Lord. So I just wanted to get up on here and encourage you. Because the body of Christ, we're going through a topsy-turvy time. But I heard God say, I'm with you. You got to do your part. We're going to have to shift in this hour like never before. And guess what? It's time for us to take the land. Let's talk for just one moment. One more moment. Isn't it crazy when the world system is out doing the church? And, and it's not a competition thing, but I'm trying to get you to, to understand something. It's a spiritual thing. I hear more and see more of the world down my timeline, what this one doing, who doing a cipher, who doing a verse, who doing this, and it's all world stuff. When we gonna start hearing about a hundred got delivered? When we gonna start hearing about a revival? When we gonna start hearing about the power of God? When, when, when? I wanna leave y'all with something. I said this to my class and this happened. The miracles, signs, and wonders. We're not seeing them. Y'all, I had about five Five miracles happened in my life. I want to leave you with one. And nobody can take it from me. It don't matter if you believe me or not. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was in Manny, Louisiana. And I just got saved. I was 27 years old. And I was working at the hospital, Manny, Manny Hospital. I worked for the medical field for 14 years, in case anybody didn't know. I started as a CNA. Then I became a ward clerk, or if you want to call it, a unit secretary. Then I went in respiratory therapy assistant. And then I got promoted to staff coordinator. So I went through all the ranks to where I could diagnose people. I mean, I thought actually that was going to be my career of choice, but I saw some things that I'm seeing still today. I started when I was 16. So I just wanted to give you a little background, but let me go ahead and tell you. So they had this woman and this would be my mandate. God did this for, um, to me for six times. I see somebody in the hospital and God would help me make a relationship with them to where they invited me to their home. And it was this Caucasian woman, I never forget. I don't know her name, but I remember she had a son that was a preacher because he was the first one that gave me this little bitty Bible. He had quit preaching, I don't know why, but they gave me a little bitty Bible. So I carried that Bible for years. And God told me, he said, she's getting ready to come home. I need you to go see her and just to, you know, kind of give her peace. So I went out there, but I was disobedient. God told me to put gas because when I was gone, I don't know if y'all know about them little dark towns in Louisiana, you can't see your hand. So I went and I didn't put no gas. So I ran out of gas. Lord have mercy on that dark. And I'm about to be very transparent. Y'all, I was scared on that dark road because they got panthers and everything. And like, God knew I was about to panic. I was about to panic. I was 27 years old. I said, God, oh my God, I'm on this dark road. Something going to get me. I mean, it was just too dark. And I'll never forget. And again, when somebody tell you a story, always go to God and ask him if it's real. You guys, God said, close your eyes. And this is a true testimony before God. Hallelujah to his name. I closed my eyes, but I peeped a little. God knew I was going to peep a little. But I closed my eyes after a minute. I saw an angel take that car on this side. I saw this. I wasn't high. I wasn't tripping. I was telling the truth. I ain't lying. I saw an angel get on side of that car. This, And I saw an angel get on side of that car on this side. And I and it was so fast because when they started, I did like that. I kind of, you know, like, you know how something take off and you kind of go back. As the Lord living, I was 30 minutes away. God said, open your eyes. I was in front of my home. <sighs> I know, I know. But I'm testifying because we don't testify, find no more about the miracles. Because God said, I'm bringing about the miracles. And that's why I'm telling this tonight. I was just like some of y'all right now, like, okay, I don't know what just happened, but I'm home and I didn't drive. I went in my apartment. All I could do is go to bed. I ain't call nobody or nothing because who, who could I tell? I just started telling the story a couple of years ago. Still didn't want to tell it because it's almost unbelievable, but it happened to me. Honey, the next day I woke up and all I could do is cry. I said, God, thank you. I don't know what happened. I said, but how did I get home? 
Hallelujah. That's a miracle. That was one of the first miracles I ever, ever. And I'm not trying to act like I'm all, you know, important and stuff like that. I am trying to encourage every last one of you that's going to look at this. The body of Christ needs to see miracles like that for yourselves. Hallelujah. And that's just one of them. I saw that. I saw them angels get on side of the car. Hallelujah. I saw it. And I was home in a flash. Blew my mind. How can you tell somebody that? Who would believe it? Hallelujah. I had it inside for years. You wouldn't tell nobody. I said, they're going to think I'm crazy. Well, thank it. Because it happened to Prophetess Deanna Dixon. 1996. Yes, it did. Hallelujah to his name. That's why y'all. Now, now y'all know why I'm so radical with it. And, and hold on. That's just one of Hallelujah. I can tell y'all something, some more, something personal that I can never say. Hallelujah. He's real. And God said, I'm getting ready to do some miracle signs and wonders again. He said, if only they believe, they will receive. But you got to get in position. And to be honest with you, I think I was more pure back then. Just to be honest with you, maybe that's why it happened. I'm just being real. You I didn't say perfect. Pure. Pure at heart. Have love in your heart for people. Really want to serve God. Ain't trying to just get money, honey, and funny. God, I just want to serve you. God, I just want to serve you. What you want me to do? Because we got to go back to evangelizing. That's where we at. It's not about houses, cars, building up churches, building up brands, trying to be this, trying to be that. Honey, let me tell y'all something like I told the students tonight. And I'm telling y'all, we have years left and, and a few before Jesus Christ comes. He never told me no date. Come on, so we're going to keep it proper. But God say, I'm coming soon. And they don't know it. Even with my uncle transitioning, I learn something all the time. I'm always asking God to teach me. Be careful how you treat people. I'm so glad I treated him nice and great. I, I, I don't, you know, you know how people mistreat people. So when something happened to them, they feel all guilty. I don't have that. That's not my testimony. But I'm sharing something with you guys. Be careful how you treat people, especially your family. Because family ain't family no more. Y'all doing too much to each other. Y'all hating on each other, talking about each other. And hold on, even in this time, I'm not going to say no names. You should have saw how they treated me and my dad not even two days ago. But I forgive y'all. I'm not going to call you out today. But that was uncalled for to where my dad don't even want to fly back home. I lost, I lost the ticket dad was supposed to. Dad don't even want to go. They treated him so bad. Death brings out the truth, don't it? Y'all ain't ready for me tonight. Y'all better be careful how y'all treat people. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just being real. Maybe I'm too real, huh? God bless you. God keep you. Be mindful of how you treat people. Be mindful of what you say. Be mindful of what you do. And know that God is real. That miracle I told y'all about tonight, God said, I'm getting ready. We need, we need to split the Red Sea. When he did all those miracles, he said, I'm still the God of miracles, Deanna. If only they would position themselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember, thus said the Lord, the weapon may fall. Because he never said it won't go fall. He said, but I'll be with you. Come on, somebody. I'll be with you. He said, I'll be with you. He said, but it will not prosper. Hallelujah. So I just want to get up on here and encourage you, even though I'm going through it. Yes, I'm hurting. I ain't going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I loved my uncle. He was real. He was real, real. Y'all know. If you knew him, he was real. He going he gonna to tell it like a T.I. is. But I know he's in a better place. He don't have to hurt anymore. He don't have to worry about this or that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know what time it is. Bro, lots of soldiers for that is truly who we are. God bless you. Have a blessed night, everyone. And thanks for watching. Share, tag, and don't forget to sew. Uh, I got to I gotta tell y'all this because I was supposed to say it. I did not take the national deal. Um, I just couldn't. So I'm going to still try to get my channel or streaming services. I just couldn't because I don't want anyone to try to edit what God tell me. And it was a national platform, but I just can't do it. I can't. I can't. <laughs> you know, it just, thank you, because they might watch this. Thank you for the opportunity. God bless you. I loved. 
um, praying with you the time, the two times that we talked. Thank you for the opportunity. But I guess God have a lot of what God is doing is God is taking us away from the spotlight and putting the light on him. You see, most people want to be famous, this and that. Can I tell you something? I'm going to get off here. I just want to be right. I just want to see the Lord. I just want to be right. Hallelujah to his name. So God bless you. Good night.